Howdy y'all, so uh, today we're gonna be doing a video on how to convert a old body style F350 dual rear wheel, two wheel drive into a four wheel drive pickup truck. Now, if you're looking for a detailed step-by-step -step, uh, video on how exactly to do every step, this isn't gonna be it. Uh, however, if that's what you're looking for, I'll leave a link in the description uh, to a write-up that I've done on a forum that will give you step by step, every inch of the way from the donor truck we bought to the uh, to the parts that we bought from Sky and all the different places, who helped us there, and all that good stuff. So that's what you're looking for. That'll be a very detailed write up for you. Now, if you're just looking to figure what goes into a project like this, this video is for you. And uh, so I hope it helps somebody out there. And uh, yeah, y'all enjoy the video. God bless. Okay, we are on to disassembly. Of course, you gotta take your bumper off, pretty easy. Take your uh, sway bar off, there's four bolts right there. Drops down. Loosen up your little uh, coal bucket, coal retainer. Something like that, I think. Holds the coal spring in there. Pop that loose, take your shock loose, nut up on top. Um, take out the nuts off the back of the uh, control arm there. That'll come down. Take your uh, nut and bolts out right there. Hold the I-beams in. Both sides, of course. Uh, take your nut off your uh, drop pitman arm, or I guess this is a stock pitman arm. We'll be putting on the drop pitman arm. Anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna get a gear puller yank that off I don't know how tight it is I've been lubing it up with PB blaster for a couple hours now pretty easy I've been working on it for I don't know an hour maybe so now I'm uh, gonna get that Pitman arm off of there and then kick out my 4x4 four four. and this whole thing should just drop right to the ground Yep, so I'll uh, show you what it looks like when we get it all off. All right, got her stripped down pretty good now. Everything's taken out. Everything but uh, all my rivet work we gotta do. We got a bolt, one, two, three rivets, one, two, three, four, up under here, we got bolts, bolts. Um, the other side, we got lots of rivets. This side is chock full of rivets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six there, and you drill too far, you hit your old pan, and that'll be a mess. Okay, everything's cut out of here now. We are taking the rivets out. These came off with grinders, fairly easy. And you pound them out, but these bottom ones are giving us trouble, so. Woo! Thank God for incredible brother-in-laws. That's not what I Especially ones with torches. <laughs> so they're gonna help me scarf off these heads and get them pounded out. Okay. Got a portable drill for us. All right, got all the uh, rivets off. Everything's been removed. Coal buckets are gone. The rear, uh, what are those? Control arm brackets. Uh, the twin I beam brackets. Those are all removed. The other side. There's our other baby. Ready to go in. Everything's all out of the way, cleaned up. All came out pretty easy. Three of us took us, I don't know, two hours to put out all the rivets. Not terrible. Got the uh, Pittman arm off. Finally had to put two relief cuts on it. And it's still bent open the uh, Pittman arm puller, but it came loose. All right, so we're gonna clean up the frame and uh, do some rust prevention. And then we'll 
we'll start putting stuff together. Not too bad. Hey y'all, so next step, we're gonna be uh, boxing in the front frame horns here. And uh, so in order to do that, we've gotta drill some holes and bolt some brackets. Now, you have the option to get these when you order your frame boxing kit. So uh, you got these jigs, you can do two ways. I think it's an extra 20 bucks for these jigs or they uh, send you paper ones, you know, that you set up here and then it'll give you this one 5 8 hole right there and then the rest you uh you know put your bracket up and you drill from the back side all right a little update on our frame boxing got it set in there got everything drilled um they say that you're supposed to tack weld it once you get the 5 8 hole done but i just went and put the 5 8 bolt through snugged it up made sure it was square and everything and it set right and then uh took the half inch drill bit and just drilled right through on all three of them. Turned out just fine, mighty fine. Got that on both of them. Wasn't too bad. Um, and then when you're doing this, I'm sure if you're going through this much work, you're doing a reverse shock kit. You got little spacers right here that uh, the four wheel drive stock frame is indented um, so you're gonna have to cut those off no big deal cut and wheel did it just fine and now we're ready to go on but my blocks are about an inch too far in the way so i'm gonna lift the truck up a little bit move my blocks out and then uh, hopefully get this thing bolted on this evening all right y'all we're gonna be talking about bracket placement and shackle angle and uh, just how to figure all this out on a two-wheel drive truck. Obviously, four-wheel drive truck, you've already got your bracket holes there uh, that you just bolt this right to, but on two-wheel drive, you don't. So um, the way you figure that is you take your leaf spring and, uh, and you measure the distance of your leaf spring or maybe uh, where you buy them from will tell you what the length is. Uh, I got mine from ATS, Talk to Junior, very helpful, help me figure all this out, Xcode Springs. Um, and so I do have 56 inch springs here, like stock. So I measured from the front pin up on the front of the rubber shackle kit back to this point right here, I measured 54 and a half inches center to center. Now Sky Off-Road, you buy the kit from, recommends an inch and a half offset from plum. Okay, so that's how you get that 54 and a half inch as you take your leaf spring. 56 inches minus that inch and a half, 54 and a half. And that is where you want this pin right here. Now I don't quite have an inch and a half from Plum. I got about an inch, but I'm hoping as these leaf springs settle that it will uh, kick back just a little bit more. And the goal of that is to get a softer ride so that when you hit a bump, your leaf spring doesn't just bend up and down. It actually comes back, back and up like so. And it gives you a lot smoother ride. And, uh, and that's how you find the angle and take your time. Uh, be methodical, measure twice or half a dozen times. Measure half a dozen times and drill them one time. Make sure you get them right, right off the bat. So that's how you do those steps. Okay, um, we actually have the axle under the truck. I mean, that's a pretty big deal right now. It's actually up underneath here. So uh, I'm going to get it bolted on because really there's not a whole lot... I mean, I can do odds and ends, but right now it's it's like able to go on. And then I'll make sure the uh, track bar is in the right spot and all kinds of other stuff. So I'm going to get it bolted on. I got our dual shock mount bottom plates here that we'll put on, new U-bolts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. So I'll uh, show you what it looks like once we get her bolted up. Okay. I have waited a long, long time to see this thing bolted up underneath here. This is pretty impressive. Got the rear shackles, brackets, all done. Nothing's tightened down. This is all just kinda finger tight sitting in here. Got everything all put together. I am missing a bolt there. I gotta go get another half inch bolt from the store. Yep, just slipped right in. No problems whatsoever. 
put it under there by myself with those floor jacks or whatever those uh, these are. holes from CI they were not drilled out all the way um, I drilled them out to seven eighths of an inch and that just did it just fine yep um, so I'll lift the uh, axle up and take the weight on put the weight on the axle and then I'll make sure that our shock mount is in the right position looks like it could be cockeyed as it is drill those out and just keep it chugging along brackets are set I uh, got the shock towers mounted they turned out pretty good um, let's see here I got my fourth bolt that I was missing Alrighty, same thing on the brake line over here shock tower um, I mean it looked pretty good it's sitting down on its tires shackle angles good I'd rather it be like that than too much because these springs are definitely going to get broken. So, yeah. Um, sway bar is on. End links, that all turned out good. Um, these holes is just kind of a free-for-all. One of them's there. You can run the bolt into and snug it up. The other one with the washer on it, you just kind of have to measure over and guess and punch it. That's why there's a washer on it because I didn't get it quite right. Uh, the one up there turned out just fine. That one's really just a guess. Um, oh, and then some more guesswork. Don't we all love guesswork? Okay. Um, that guy right up in there. Yep. That one is guesswork. I did not want to take my brand new SMB body mounts out all over again and then try and drill a cockeyed angled uh, hole. So I just guessed it. And actually on both sides, they turned out yeah. quite well. I think we're ready to finish up the track bar mount, put the drop pitman arm on, and what else? Then I think we can move to the rear, put the bumper on. This is crazy. I can't believe this is actually happening. Oh, the shocks, you gotta put the shocks on too. Dual bill stains. Yep. Okie dokie, folks. I think that's about it for the day. Okie dokie, we got our drop pitman arm on. 200 foot pounds, tie rod ends, all that good stuff. Torqued them down to 67 foot pounds. I can only find numbers for the super duties, which should be pretty darn close to this. We'll find out here after a few thousand miles. All coming good. I got one more thing and that's my pan hard bar. Gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that one bolt. Run to Ace, grab some bolts to put it all together. And then the brake lines and uh, the shocks. And then we can move on to the rear end. Super exciting. Oh, I gotta put the grease circs in on the fittings there. Yep, we are stinking close. All right, y'all, we got the uh, rear end all buttoned up here. Uh, we got our four inch blocks off our donor truck in there and the u-bolts with it that all turned out just right i uh, got our new bilsteins up in there our brake line extended brake line from pmf up in there as well both sides turned out just perfect and uh it leveled the truck just right i think the inch is one inch higher than the front which works pretty good for me so now let's see uh show you what it looks like and there she is step one complete suspension sits nice and level Woo. doesn't that look sweet took the body kit off took the uh Grandpa slances, my mom calls them. Hey, Ginger. Yeah. Turned out great. Super excited. All right, well, that's the completion of step one. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Leave a, a like and a comment or whatever you do on YouTube. Anyways, y'all take care. God bless.